Hi everyone, David Malley here. Today we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to show you how to do compound interest and future value calculations in Excel. So let's get started. Right here we have investment data. I have initial investment, additional payments, interest rate, term years, which is 10, and compounding periods, months of 12 and the original formula. So I want to show you, I've got $1,000 I want to invest, right? That just I'm just throwing a number out there. It's an easy whole number. $100 additional payments um, and a 10% interest rate. Now, why am I showing you with a 10% interest rate? Well, down below here, just for reference, I want to show you the average S&P return of all time is 9.998 or something like that. So it's basically 10%. So if you were to look at it for the last 10 years, it's actually 13.60%. So uh, what I want to do is I want to just look at it as 10%, and I want to assume, let's just say, 10% for each year, right? Now, what I want to show you here is we're going to end up with this table here by year, and then we're going to also show you how to end up with this graph here so you can see the power of compound interest over time, which is a very important principle. The reason being is if you can invest your money correctly over time at 10% after, so this graph shows you 30 years and same with this table here, look at what happens. You, you're, the amount you invest, you know, it's very minimal. The blue is your total amount, right? But the net gain is the orange. So what that means is how much you've really invested is in the blue and then how much your money is earned for you is in the orange. Look at the difference. If you invest your money, you can end up with a lot of money without having to invest a ton if you let time take care of it, right? 30 years, uh, 10 years, whatever it is. So let's go back here and let's get started. So first we want to do, as you know, 10% is the average return. So we go up here and I want to show you this calculation. We're going to use the FV or future value calculation. So with this, we have a, it looks kind of messy, but it's not. So let's dive into this. So it's B4. So if you look at B4 is the interest rate. So it's FE, B4 divided by B6, which is the term, right? So you're compounded over 12 months. So if I take B4, the interest rate, 10 divided by 12, because think about it, you're not going to get 10% each month. It's just not going to happen. That would be 120% interest rate per year or above that. And that's not, that would not be accurate. So it'd be too high. So 10, at the interest rate of 10% divided by 12 gives you the first term. So that is the rate divided by the compounding period. Okay, then you put comma, see it right there, and then you've got B5 times B6. B5 is your term, 10 years in this case. If I, for this, I'm not doing that over here now. So it would be 10 times B6, which is your compounding period again of 12, right? So you got, that would be 120 compounding periods, right? 10 times 12, comma, then a negative B3, which is your additional payment. So any payments you put in, whether they be monthly or at, all at once, are going to be negative for the Excel calculations. So they're negative. See that negative right there? B3, comma, and then a negative B2, which is your initial investment of $1,000. So if you start off with $1,000 and then $100 each month, that's how that works. If you don't put these negatives in here, it's going to give you a negative number here, and that's not going to be correct. All right, so you don't want to see negative $23,000. So now when we do this based off of a term of 10 years, and we do it this way, we end up with $23,191.54. But, you know, I want to see a breakdown, right? You want to see a breakdown. We don't want to just see, okay, for 10 years, and then here's here it is for 30 years. I want to see how this money grows, right? So that's where we have this chart. And we have a slightly different array of formulas here. So we're still going to use the same. So if we look at this year one, if I go here, same FV calculation, but I've changed something what changed so look here and look here so what we've got is b4 and b6 same thing interest rate compounding period because each year has 12 months right so we're going to compound it monthly that's what we're looking at you could compound it daily if you wanted to and change that number based off that and make it 356 days a year or 365 days i'm sorry a year or whatever it is you want to use um but here see this d3 we have to include our additional payments right Hold on, so go back here, times B6, and we've got a negative B3, which is $100, and a negative B2. So we end up with 2361, but keep in mind, we're using what? CD3, not B3, D3 
is one. See that? And if it's confusing, let me go over it again real quick. Okay, so B4 and B6 are the same. D3 is the difference here. Everything else, see it's got Bs. They're all the same. This is the one that's different here, D3. That's from here. So instead of using this guy, the term of 10, which we used prior in this calculation, we're using 1. So right here, if you hit enter on this at the end, you will end up with $2,361.27, right? Now, how much did you invest? Well, obviously we know we invested $1,000 plus you have a year, so you'd have 12 months of $100, which would be $2,200, right? So if you take this, your net gain would be E3, this, minus B2, which is this. Now keep in mind, when you see some of these with the dollar sign, that's because I don't want it to keep moving down. Those are set in stone. We're not changing our $1,000 investment, okay? So that's how you get that minus D3, one, times B6, compounding periods, months, times B3. And again, see the dollar signs in these? So pay attention in the, in the formulas to where the dollar signs go. Okay, if you don't, you'll get the wrong number. So if I go in here, see in this one, we're not going down and multiplying. So we're just doing this, so I don't have to have those here. It's set in stone. It's just for 10 years right here. But if I want to do it so I can go and copy it down based off of changing years, so for year two, that way I don't have to keep rewriting the formula. All I do is copy that formula down, and it gives me, see how I do it? It copies it down. These guys with the dollar sign all stay the same, see that? But this guy changes from D4 to D5 to D6 to D7 to D8, you know, and so on. Then, so once you have this, you want the net gain. Now see the, this? Look at this. It changes the E4 and D4, this number and this, right? But the rest stays the same. That's how you get the net gain. Okay, and then we have the percent return. So once we have the net gain, right? So we know that obviously it was twenty-two hundred dollars. So the net gain would be one sixty-one twenty-seven. The percent return is based off of F three, which is the net gain divided by the total of the compound interest, which is twenty-three sixty-one twenty-seven. So our return for that year of that one sixty-one twenty-seven is six point eight three percent. And you can do this and same thing and copy these all the way down. You can either copy them together like this and double click on the plus sign, or you can do it for each individual one and copy them down. And I have it, it goes down to 30. Okay. But when you look at this, look at the net gain and how it changes. So in, initially it's just 6.8%. But once you get to 10 years, right, where you have this number, it breaks it out better so you know that you put in you know, take out that 10, you put in 13,000 or so dollars and you end up with a 43.95% return at that point. But it gets better as you keep going at 20 years, if you still do a hundred or a thousand dollars initially and a hundred dollars a month for 20 years, you end up with now a gain of $58,000 and you're at 69.98%. And if you keep it longer, at 30 years, you end up with $208,000 in your net gain. You've only put in, you know, 30,000 some odd dollars, and you end up with, uh, well, it'd be, uh, yeah, about 38,000 or so dollars, and you end up with an 84.95% net or return on that money. So that's the power of compound interest. And when you take that over here, all you got to do is take this chart. And you have to have year, and what we show in this one is our total and our net gain. So we're not showing the percent return. And you take these, you copy these down, just like that, and then you go to insert, and you're going to pick the recommended charts. So this, you can pick whatever you want, all charts, and you can pick an area chart, and that's where you'll see my graph is right there that I picked. So let's hit cancel because we already have it there. So once you do that. You bring this out, you can make it a little bit neater and change the, uh, the title and stuff like that. Um, you can add the legends, you can add you know whatever you want to it and change the colors around if you want. But it shows the power of compound interest. And so this was twofold to show you one, how to get compound interest with the FV function in 
Excel. And then two, to help you understand the importance of compound interest over time and how your money can make more money and how it's important to saving and investing and how easy it is to do that. It sounds like a really calculated or a really complex calculation. It's really not. Again, here it is right here highlighted. You just need to have your your initial investment, okay, which in this case is a thousand dollars. And see how it's color coded once you put this in, it's very easy to see which goes where. So you've got your initial investment, which is your B5, or actually your, um, this one would be B2. So B2 is this guy at the end right here. And then you've got your additional payments is 100, so these are your two negatives right here, B3 and B2. Then you've also got your interest rate, okay, which is 10%, which is B4, which is right here, divided by B6, which is your compound, compound periods, months, 12. And that's what I used here, so if we compounded it monthly, that's what it would be and uh, B5 and B6, which is your term divided by your compound periods. So if you don't get this correct, make sure you understand this part here, you have to have B4 divided by B6, your interest rate, divided by your compound periods. And then the second part with a comma in there, you have B5 times B6, which is your term times your compounding periods. So if you have 10 years times 12, there'd be 120 compounded periods. If you have that here it just you just go down the whole list now by doing this um, you can see all of the different you know this now copy the formula over from here that's fine don't worry about that what I'm trying to show you here let's get off this compound this interest thing so in here you can see it again right here see that so you have B4, B6, D3, B6, and you can copy it on down. That's what you do. Just make sure you hit enter each time or else it'll erase your and replace your formula like you just did there of saying E3. Don't worry about that. Just look at the video, replay it, look at these the different fields I'm using, and remember to uh, use the uh, dollar signs on the correct pieces. If you don't, it won't copy it down correctly. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this interesting and informational. And please learn about compound interest. It will help you in your life. It will help you as an analyst. And it will help you with your investments and savings throughout your life. Thanks again. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And have a great day.